Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 out of 2 games between Kaylee Laker and Gonzo in round 2 of the second European tournament. Today we are going to be seeing Pegasus Bridge and on the allied side Kaylee Laker has chosen the 15th Infantry Scots. And on the Axis side Gonzo has his coveted 116th. It's been a while since we've seen Gonzo on the 116th. It is a division that he certainly made a name with. He brought it into a couple of tournaments and just showed us how to utilize recon aircraft to find the information he needed to play around and find a breakthrough with a very, very fast and mobile division that is the Windhund. So... Whether or not he can do that again, we'll have to wait and see. KD Laker on the Allied side does have a very strong division. It has Honeys, it has the AVRE in Phase A. It also has Churchill Fives. Churchill Fives aren't as useful against the 116th as they are against other divisions because the 116th does have Panzer Threes as well as Marder Threes. So Gonzo does have a couple of things to sort of either shrug off or deal with the Churchill Fives. But the AVRE will certainly be a force to be reckoned with in the town. And the Honeys uh, may be able to be utilised at close ranges to deal with the Panzer Threes. But of course, the Panzer Threes do have the veterancy over the Honeys um, in this case, because the Honeys don't have any veterancy. And the Panzer Twos, or Panzer Threes, sorry, have two star veterancy for the most part. So let's have a look at some of the units going down. Over on the side of KD Laker, it's going to be one honey accompanying a couple of units of rifles to the center of the map. There's also an AT gun there and the command infantry. On the top side, AT gun, two rifles, or possibly even Bren group. And then on the bottom side, it's going to be a couple of units of infantry with the recon there and an AA piece at the start. Not entirely sure why you would take AA at the start against the Windhund, unless you were really worried about a recon aircraft at the start of the game. Either way, on the side of Gonzo, on the top side is going to be the 25010 with the Panzer Trek and a unit of Panzer Grenadiers. For the town, just a singular unit of Panzer Grenz. And then on the bottom, we do see the Panzer 3M with the um, Panzer Grenadiers and a 258 and an SBW 232. So here comes that Storch, the recon aircraft that Gonzo loves to use with the 116th. It's going to be floating its way towards the front line of Cady Laker. KD Laker does have something up his sleeve. The Bofors. And that will be able to force this recon back for the time being and remove that information from Gonzo, which may cause Gonzo to be a lot more conservative with his aggression. However, seeing that there has been 80 points invested into a Bofors. It may give Gonzo all the information he needs to get aggressive. Okay, DeLaker is going to be zooming down to this bottom side with his six pounder. And if that can take out the 232 or even the 258, then there's a good chance it will be able to spot or kill off his entire push on this bottom side. Gonzo is going to have to be very careful with how he works through this because the honey is coming down from the town. It's going to find a shot onto his half track. Lucky that those Panzer Grenadiers did not get killed in one shot there. And now we can see the 258 actually engaging this road here and preventing any units from heading through here, which is really, really smart. Meanwhile, Panzer III does engage the honey. First shot causes a weapon jam. Six Pounder is going to try and move into the tree line here. But Bren Group have been taken care of. 
and now the Panzer Grenadiers are going to be in range of the six pounder should it reveal itself. So although I think Kedileger had the right units and the right idea, it seems as though he's kind of shot himself in the foot. This six pounder could have just unloaded and got into the tree line already. The honey didn't really have to get shot in the face by a Panzer III. But at least the six pounder does find the kill onto the half track there. Can this six pounder clean up the Panzer III? No, it cannot. It gets taken out. Only my auto cannon on that 232. Very, very strong. Backed up by the machine guns of the Panzer 3M. Gets the job done. This Panzer Grenadier was bombed by KD Laker. And now is going to continu continuously be pinned down by the Bofors. But it's up to the 6-pounder to kill the 258. That's the, that's the key here. But the, but the 6-pounder is firing at the half-track. I think that's actually because it doesn't quite have line of sight. Which would then make sense. But yeah, taking out these two units is very important here. Gonzo's making a lot of ground. And there's quite simply nothing this honey can do about the advance of the Panzer III. New honey is on its way to both the bottom side and the mid. But I can't believe we're in a situation where Katie Laker just seems to have nothing on the field got two units of Bren Group holding the top side. I swear there was an AT brought in up there, but that must have been taken out one way or another. The six pounder does get pinned by the Panzergrens. The Panzergrens go down to the Bofors. But I think this six pounder is going to be 20 mil food. The 232 comes round. Six pounder won't recover as this, it's going to be behind enemy lines technically. And it's dead. Both AT guns taken out. The one in the mid. The one on the bottom. Gee, that's my, that might be what happened. The AT gun that w originally deployed to the top side was brought down to the mid. I might have missed that. But either way, both as dies. Honey's going to be taken out in the town. Rifle leaders under pressure from the Panzer Grenadiers. This is quickly turning into a rout for the 15th Infantry Scots. Now the first shot does come through here from the Honey. I don't know what to say. That is just so unfortunate for KD Laker. His shot, track wheel damage to 232 instead of being a lethal shot. And then the Go Gonzo's 232 crew wounds the Honey so it doesn't get a second shot off and then actually kills it. You can't make this stuff up. Panzer III rolls through the command infantry and the rifles, helping pin down both of those. Spitfire Mark IX is just a little bit too late with that bombing strike. And Gonzo's even making ground on this bottom side. This engagement still absolutely baffles me. Very, very unfortunate there for KD Laker. He had the right idea. These honeys can do well at close range, but... Maybe not against the Panzer III. Weapon jam, jam there again for KD Laker. <laughs> oh, he's going to hate that critical after this game. Both of his honeys that went to the mid took weapon jams. And that is just so difficult to deal with in the early game because you don't have the cash or the economy to afford a Bedford supply early on let alone the positioning to get that out of there like he just got that killed by a 250-10 and when a honey's going down to a 250-10 you know you're in a bad situation now the 6 pounder did manage to clean up the 232 and by doing so he does remove some of the potential veterancy from these Panzer threes. but so far these Panzer threes have been very deadly. There goes another unit for KD Laker. Just a carrier. But still a unit that did cost a lot to bring in. Especially accompanying these Reki. The plus two for Gonzo early on. 
generally how you counter the 116th is you sort of draw the game out and then kill their Panthers. Or you can maybe try and find some ground in the early game by killing the Panzer 3s and leaving them with not much else to play with. But in this case, the Panzer 3s are still up. Gonzo's got a very strong position. And KD Laker's going to have a long way to go if he wants to bring this one back. The 250-10 finds another kill onto a honey. And that just works out because the engagement range is 800 meters. So the 250-10, with its really fast rate of fire, 12 rounds per minute, does actually have 7 AP versus the 5 front armor of the honey. And it's more than enough to get the job done. Six pounder moves into the tree line here, gets a clean shot onto the half track, but already under fire from a 257, Gonzo is now brought in to reinforce. Things aren't getting any better. Panzer 3 will be engaging a honey at close range. It's already got its gun facing the right way. Internal fragments for the honey. Surprised that wasn't a kill. The honey lucky to be alive, but probably not going to be for very long. As the Panzer III comes around the corner, finds that close range engagement, KD Lake has had enough. And after 8 minutes and 20 seconds, Gonzo shows us exactly why he is well known for his strengths with the 116th Panzer. What a game from Gonzo. I can't help but feel that KD Lake would be incredibly frustrated after that game. Like I mentioned at the start, he seemed to have the right idea. He predicted that recon aircraft would be in the sky. But that six pounder, although it came in from the right direction, was kind of accidentally countered by the positioning of the Bofors. Because what happened was the Bofors sort of ran behind cover and then Gonzo fire positioned the road to stop the Bofors from coming back and pinning down his units. But by doing so, unwittingly, stopped the six pounder from unloading so close to the road, which meant that the six pounder did not counter the vehicles from range. And because that did not happen, the Panzer Grenadiers got into the tree line KD Laker was forced to deal with those but could not do so properly. Therefore, the Panzer Grenadiers eventually found the pin onto the six pounder, which led to the 232 finding the kill. Also, due to the fact that the six pounder did not get into the tree line sooner, the pincer attack did not take place. The honey in the middle town did get hit by the Panzer III without the six pounder being involved. And that was all she wrote. It just led to a snowball effect from there. Some very strong micro from Gonzo allowed him to run around the backside of Con of Katie Laker's like land, and well, that was it. Really, really nicely played game there from Gonzo, and apologies for it being such a short game. But I think sometimes it's good to highlight just how good Gonzo is with certain divisions. And the 116th being one of them. It's been a while since we've seen him dominate with the 116th. Because he just hasn't been playing it. But comes back strong in the second European tournament. Taking two games from KD Laker. Yes, the six pounders found a couple kills, but they weren't the kills they needed. Six pounders really needed to find the kills onto the uh, Panda threes in the end. It's two, 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 or two, three, two. What an absolute hero! Took out both of the six pounders and killed that honey at close range. Credited the Bofors kill as well. So many honeys died. Five honeys in total. Not to pieces by Panzer 3s, as well as the 250-10. Really unfortunate stuff there for KD Laker. But an interesting game to watch, and hopefully you guys are 
appreciated me covering some of Gonzo's play. Like I said, I didn't, like I said in the last game, I didn't cover his round one games because they were so short. And he did win both of those, I believe. But that is all for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.